I don't know how we got here. Wait, that's a lie. But let's fix this problem. Hi guys, Armand here from Shrimpstop. I hope everybody's doing well. Just a general notice before we start. No fish, shrimp or snails were harmed in the making of this video. They've been collected during the course of the rescape, moved to a separate tank where they're all doing very well and they will be moved back to this tank when everything is done. So to start off with, I'm just quickly removing all the cuttings and loose plants that are floating around in the tank. Also any of the large floaters that I've got in there like frogbit, here's a little close up of it. And then I've got tons and tons of duckweed in this tank as well. And that's basically duckweed and frogbit is one of the few plants that I tolerate. They can become a, a big nuisance sucking up or blocking out the light that gets in your tank. But I like them because they suck up any excess nutrients that's in the tank. So your water is much better for having them in there. Now it is neglect that let this tank get to this stage. It was not having enough time in the day from going and doing a trim on the plants just doing my water changes the tank is actually kind of clean besides it being very 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 overgrown the plants are flourishing as you can quite well see the fish and the shrimp are all doing well in my four foot tank i use that exclusively for my cull shrimp but i've had this idea of doing it over and then converting it to a crystal red or crystal black tank. I think the crystal reds are going to work much better in this, but I still want a skate tank. I want something nice to be the centerpiece of my home, the one tank that you see when you walk in the door. And for this reason, I had to make the time and actually do this and do this properly. Most of the plants that I'm planning to keep in the tank, they don't want and need a lot of light. I'm not going to go into like really hard ground covers to do like dwarf baby tears. If you guys have ever tried growing dwarf baby tears, they are really, really hard to grow. They need very good light and they need, uh, in my opinion, uh, pressurized CO2 to, to actually flourish so guys some advice as i'm i'm going through this process always plan ahead don't just start off and start yanking out plants or start cutting plants I have a picture in your head now i know the type of scape that i want to do unfortunately some of the plants that i've got in here they're not going to make it into the new scape most of them are we always need to reuse stuff we are in a age and in a world where everything is disposable and we throw stuff away too easily rather reuse the stuff that we can now guys as you can see i'm taking out some plants by the roots and i'm cutting others the plants that i'm taking out by its roots are the crypts and the plants that actually do better with the roots if you're going to replant them the plants that i'm cutting are stem plants regardless if you take them out by the root or you cut them stem plants grow back if you cut and plant them again most of the plants are going back into the new scape i'm waiting on some dwarf hair grass to be delivered this week that's going to be my carpeting plant i love the way that dwarf hair grass carpets it looks lush i love the the color of the dwarf hair grass it's a nice contrast to the other greens there are some very very nice red plants going in the tank as well so it won't just be a sea of green um, some of the crypts that i have are also the browns so so there's going to be depth in the in the scape one thing to remember before you think about reusing an active substrate in a scape is to check that it's still buffering so guys at this stage the water is getting really really murky of from me removing plants straight out of the substrate what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take out as much as i can before it gets too cloudy some of the plants that were hidden in this mess and over 
Groners is some Crips, some Parva and also a Panageton a lace leaf. They've just been hidden in that mess and uh, they will be getting a much more prominent placement in the new scape. So guys at this stage with the water being so cloudy I've decided to stop for a few hours catch all the remaining fish that were still in there and some of the shrimps that I could see and then I let the tank stand for another day for it to be back to crystal clear got out the rest of the shrimp drained the tank to about halfway and let it stand and then a week later I took out the rest of the water and caught the remaining shrimp that was still in there they was 100% fine the, the neocardina are tough guys they didn't mind the, the cloudiness of the water at all. I still got buried females that I caught out of there. And that's usually a sign if something goes wrong, females drop their eggs. So move them all to a holding tank. And um, in the next episode, we're going to do the rescape. We hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share and subscribe. If you didn't, you know what to do. From us here at Shrimp Stop, thank you for watching till the end and keep shrimping. Stop